Another person on earth with a small amount of Saiyan blood. His power has been drawn out by the dark god of destruction Gaur. But will it be enough? The battle between Saiyan and Torans, which was fought in ancient times, has been rekindled with new fire. An ultimate battle, unlike any other, is about to begin. The fight between the Saiyan Vegeta and the Saiyan Zen. This was the story of Yamashi's grandson, the first dark god of destruction. When does the path we walk on crumble beneath our feet? When does our strength get tested and all our hard work faces the challenge that it never expected? When does our journey come to its end? Life works in mysterious ways. You could always search for the thing that you want, but when you get the thing that you thought is all what you wanted, it wouldn't be quite what you expected. And power is just that. No matter what you get, or what form you achieve, there is always the next step, there is always another journey waiting just behind the corner, and there is always someone who has beaten you to the thing that you wanted, and this is where your true strength should come in. Our story is about our Saiyans, Goku and Vegeta, and the Saiyan Zen, the story of Dragon Ball Super Tiger Road, the second part of it. The Saiyans are now facing someone new, someone who is different than all and at this point they have achieved a lot, they have achieved Ultra Instinct and Vegeta achieved a new form but will that be enough? Will they break to the next milestone of power and how will they react when they meet the first Saiyan Ultra Instinct God? And now our story will continue. The Dark Destruction God Gauro and his assistant devil Kiroshia suddenly appeared before Hyuga, which is Zen. Zen chosen by Gauro to be his plaything had his latent powers drawn out by Kiroshia. Gauro and Toro resulting in the birth of the wicked warrior Xanthium. Though Zen had no bad experience, his latent powers were so tremendous that he already carried the power of the Super Saiyan 2 transformation. From the changes that occurred in Zen's body, Gauro assessed how much potential power lay dormant within him. He performed a separation between the uncontrollably wicked Xanthia and Zen and immediately headed to Pyrrhus's temple. But Zen's group, having shown Pyrrhus and with his overwhelming presence, headed straight to Earth where Goku and Vegeta were. And this is just what happened in the last chapter. And now Zen is facing Vegeta. A Saiyan facing a Saiyan. Vegeta launches at Zen. Zen, steady right there, he dodges all of Vegeta's punches. Vegeta says, this guy is no big deal. What meaningless exaggerations. Even so, I can't feel his key at all. Just what is he? Could he possibly be an android? And him thinking this way, I mean, this guy has got key. So this is why he can't feel his key. And Vegeta should know that. Then, Zen gets a hit on Vegeta. Vegeta starts to worry as Zen smiles. He tells him, don't get so full of yourself just because you landed one punch. Fine, I will end this in an instant for you. Prepare yourself. Vegeta gets his hands up and readies the final flash. He fires it at point blank towards Zen with an explosion so massive that Vegeta is just standing right there, smiling, thinking that it's all over. At Goku, as he's looking, he noticed something, he shouts for Vegeta, Vegeta, above, it's Zen, he's above him, he fires two key blasts at point blank towards Vegeta, throwing him down at the ground. All are watching, Goku and Beerus are shocked from what they have seen. As Goku goes towards Vegeta, he tells him, I can't feel this guy's key at all, did you find anything from fighting? But Zen doesn't give them a chance, he teleports besides them and goes at Goku, so Goku goes back at him, but Zen is dodging all of his attacks, Goku thinks to himself and says, what is this, he's dodging all my attacks, I can't feel anything from this guy, it's a void, it's this guy's key, it's that of a god or something else. Beerus is even worried how Zen is dodging Goku's attacks and the power that he's hiding. He thinks about the time that Zen went at him and shown his true powers. Without Ultra Instinct, Goku doesn't stand a chance, but also he can't use it freely for now. Even Gauro gets bored, he tells Zen to end this quickly so they can go home. He still wants to have fun with him, but Goku is charging like a meha meha and is about to fire it at Zen. Zen doesn't know what's happening as Goku fires his kameha meha at him and this is bad as Gauru says but Kiroshia interferes and drops Zen down and lets him avoid the kameha meha. As she catches him it's Toru he deflects the attack by Goku but what is he doing here? 
Goku's face in Toro and Toro actually has ultra instinct from his looks even Goku sees it he pounces his Kamehameha like it was nothing Garo tells Toro your role is over you will just get in the way of the battle so go home already but Toro replies with it's absurd letting you fight now that everything is sorted everything you're doing now is nothing more than to satisfy your own desires I didn't face Zen to make things turn out like this if you're saying to let things continue as is you will have to let me take Zen back home but Gauru refuses that it's not over with the potential he sees in Zen. This is not how it ends. So now Toro is facing a dark god of destruction. And Toro is different. Toro has Ultra Instinct and his presence is alarming. And the Saiyan who has mastered Ultra Instinct against the dark god of destruction. Vegeta watching from the distance gets angry. He says I alone would be enough to face those kinds of guys. He transforms to a super saiyan and launches towards Toro. As he delivers a kick Toro just dodges. With every attack from Vegeta Toro dodges all of his attacks. He tells him you're a saiyan. Vegeta replies with so what if I am? What are you supposed to be? Goes at him with a tiger punch straight at Vegeta's face knocking him down. Goku seeing that transforms to a super saiyan and goes to help Vegeta. Zen also transforms and goes to Toro's side. Now the two Saiyans from planet Vegeta are facing Toro and Zen. Toro tells them, I currently have no reason to be fighting you two. Pardon my rudeness, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave. Then he puts his hand on Zen's shoulder and teleports somewhere else. Goku and Vegeta are still in shock. They don't know who those guys were and how are they this strong. We see another planet, what looks like Saiyans who are wearing the God of Destruction wear. Toro and Zen are at that place. The people there know Toro and they see this guy with him. Toro explains and says, this is an isolated space just for us Toras to live in. We once had our mother planet but it was erased by a destruction god. We Toras almost went extinct because of a certain, because of a certain technique used by the destruction god. In order to protect the Toras, we made a pact with the destruction god not to miss with them. So they have a truce with the god of destruction. Zen ask him, you got almost extinct because of something stupid like that. To just take me places all so suddenly erase planets, I can't understand them. Toro tells him, it is a dangerous technique, feared even by the gods. It's a technique to make the body move by itself, freed of conscience, though to avoid danger. They call this technique Ultra Instinct. To the gods, this technique makes anyone who masters it a danger to them. That's why the destruction gods tried to get rid of us, but we made a deal to serve them as their helping hands. So we somehow managed to live on. That's how it is. Even so, to think they try to destroy us just because we can use ultra instinct and this is what is on Toro's mind and since they can use ultra instinct and the gods almost can't they can use it somehow but those guys mastered it the Toro's mastered it and this is why the gods of destruction feared them because the power of mastered ultra instinct not even the gods could possess and it's an immense power that someday if something happens they can overthrow the gods the destruction gods do not yet know of the true meaning of ultra instinct in legends they say that ultra instinct is the ultimate fighting technique but that's not what it really is it's a wild defensive instinct for the purpose of self-protection it's not an attack move for any kind of battle but a technique fully specialized in defense that is why master and ultra instinct will not change your attack power well we've talked a lot but for now our dealings with the destruction gods are going well it's necessary to be cautious but now that you're here i will guide you around town Zen asks Toro about their wear, why is everyone in this town has one. Toro tells him it's something called the Polka and it's a practice passed down in, in Torah since old times. It's like a protective charm but due to the godly amount of power springing forth from it, the destruction gods have also started to wear it. They get interrupted by someone called Pasky, which looks like Goku. He asks Toro who is that, he introduces himself as Zen and reaches with his hand to shake Pasky's hand. Pasky feels Zen's key, it's amazing, but it gives off a displacing feeling. Could it be that you are a Saiyan? Zen tells that yeah, he is a Saiyan, which makes him angry. He goes towards Zen with an attack, but Toro stops him. Pasky is surprised, why is he helping and defending a Saiyan? He tells him, it's not like I'm letting them off the hook. A lot of things happen for now, let's take it easy and 
talk about it But Basky doesn't want to Then he leaves Toro tells Zen that a lot happened with this guy Let's take it easy and talk about it with you On Earth Beerus tries to get out of it And says that he technically won since his fighter isn't there But Whis notices something Someone breaks Whis's staff as this guy is there And we see him he has long hair That looks like a Saiyan It's Xanthia The evil spirit that was in the realm and he looks very menacing from his face his smile all of his aura he is a force to be reckoned with Goku and Vegeta see that so they transform to their super saiyan god form and are ready to fight this guy but will they be enough will they be the force to stop the evil will they achieve new powers to defend their planet and everyone that they love this was the story of the time that Goku and Vegeta met the saiyan god of ultra instinct the story of Dragon Ball Super Tiger Road Throughout all of our lives we will fall We will reach points where we think that we can't continue with our path That life is too harsh on us That no one is with us That our power isn't enough But the strongest thing that we can do at that point Is to keep believing and keep our heads up Cause what falls down comes back up And what's up will always go down at some point so no matter what power they reach, no matter what form Goku and Vegeta achieve, there will always be someone above them. And now, with the story we saw that, this was the story of the second part of the Dragon Ball Super Tiger Road. Thank you for watching, and saying that, I will see you on the next one. Bye bye.